Hey everyone, I'm back and I 100% guarantee I know exactly what most of you are thinking this video will hopefully be about. And that is, of course, the new products that have been announced by OM System. Now, I'm not one who you will see on social media posting the day of release and all of these items about a new product. I am not a fan of camera review sites. I am not a fan of reviews that are done on gear that you've owned for a week. I will be using this channel to give you hands-on, real life, not setting some stupid ass chart on a wall and taking pictures of it. Dear God, that drives me nuts. I don't give a crap about what the most effective or sharpest aperture is on a lens use the aperture I need. As you guys can tell, I just don't give a crap about that. I don't have to be the first to make an announcement. What I'd rather be is the last who knows what the hell they're talking about. All right. So I know what you want to know. Am I going to replace my OM1s? As you know, I have two of them. I have an ungripped one. This is my landscape macro body. Okay. And that currently has the 40 to 150 on it. And I have a gripped OM1 with the 150 to 400. And since I'm still here in Yellowstone doing workshops, I'm on my third one. And since I'm still out shooting primarily wildlife, some landscapes, those are the lenses I have on right now. And I have the eight to 25 with me. So the big question being, am I going to replace the OM-1 with the OM-1 Mark II? Now, unlike a lot of stupid YouTubers who say, stick around to the end for the answer, and if that crap drives you nuts, don't worry. You're not going to have to deal with that crap on my channel. Simple answer is, of course, I'm replacing them. Just live graduated neutral density filter alone means I'm replacing that camera. And I know what a lot of people are saying. Well, money, money. Photography is nothing but time and money. So I realize that I don't have endless money. I know you don't. But I'm going to share with you throughout this video why I am and why I already have pre-ordered not one but two OM-1 Mark IIs. Hey nature photographers, I'm Lee Hoy, OM System Ambassador, Photography Workshop Instructor for Wildside Nature Tours and Precision Camera and Video and Contributing Author for the Journal of Wildlife Photography. Here we go! All right, before I jump into why I pre-ordered two OM-1 Mark IIs, and I will address the question of whether or not I will be getting a 150 to 600 lens. I want to address some of the nonsense I've been seeing on social media because I hope if you're a part of my community, you're not a part of this. You know, some of the crap that drives me crazy on the Facebook groups, and if you notice, I almost never post on a Facebook group. I just don't have time to deal with the level of stupidity, speculation, griping, complaining, bitching. I'm too busy. I'm too busy shooting shots, man. I am out in the field leading workshops, teaching, photographing, doing all the kinds of things with these cameras that people say you can't do. You know, the ones that like to sit in rooms and focus on something that isn't moving with no wind and not minus 37 and then tell you how well something performs. You know, maybe some of y'all, some of the haters are going to comment down below or on some of the other videos about how they can't get it to perform at high ISO. It's not the camera. It's still you. Um, here's some things I've been seeing on social media. One, a lot of people are griping that there haven't been new products from OM system. When are we going to have new products? And oh my gosh, the speculation that OM system is collapsing. It's going away. They're not producing new products, right? So I've seen that griping for a while. So now there's a new camera body and I'll be damned if the gripe is not now. Well, why isn't this a firmware update? And let me translate that. Why can't I get it for free? Let me remind you, have you looked at how many camera bodies Canon has thrown out, vomited out, because they fell behind? Have you looked at the prices on most of those cameras? Have you looked at the features, i.e., the lack of, right? So if you're a Canon user, I'd be way more upset than if you're an OM system user. I know what most of you wanted was a bigger sensor. A, because you probably lack poor field craft, because you want to crop the crap out of your images, because God Almighty, you measure everything by how big your sensor is. And again, I don't care how many megapixels I have. I don't need it. I get great images without having 45 or 100 
megapixels. By God, I that's the last thing I look at on the camera I'm going to buy. Do not care, okay? So you're talking about a company that has the OM-1, one of, one of the most, if not the most innovative and advanced camera on the market, and now we have some significant improvements to it, okay? Yes, oh my God, it's not megapixels, wah, wah, wah. All right, here's what the, 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 the things I've been seeing, what you're griping about. You, we need a firmware update on the OM-1. Okay, great, maybe you'll get one. Many of the new features on the OM-2 and the upgrades cannot be accomplished through a firmware update. It needed a bigger buffer. It needed more power. So how many of you whine when you buy a MacBook in one year? Oh my God, they came out with another one the next year. Do you whine when they come out with an iPhone the next year? Do you whine when there's a new Apple Watch with new features? Or do you just expect it all to be free? So one hand, you're whining and bitching about, oh, OM system isn't going to survive. They come out with a new product to sell and you're whining and bitching about wanting it free. You can't have it all, okay? So, and I know many of you that watch this channel are not that way. So, but, but if you are, just stop being a whiner, okay? Understand, yes, yeah, some of you, oh my God, I just bought the OM-1. Why didn't somebody tell me wait? A, we can't legally tell you to wait. B, why would we? The OM-1 is a phenomenal camera. I said I pre-ordered two OM-1 Mark IIs. I didn't say I was getting, ready of an o getting rid of any of my OM-1s, okay? The OM-1 was such a significant advance over the EM-1X, I ended up selling two of my three EM-1Xs. I will not be getting rid of my OM-1s, and I'll tell you why here in a minute, okay? So many of the reasons why, I'm pre why I've am why i pre-ordered an OM-1 Mark II it aren't things that could be accomplished through a firmware update, okay? So if you're posting or you're caught up in all of that, get over it and just decide whether or not if you want to buy the OM-1 Mark II. Here is why I did, okay? And you'll notice I use the word, I bought it. Okay. I did not get it for free, so you can get over that. I don't get a salary from OM System. I'm not telling you good things about it because I'm an ambassador. I had great majority of my OM System gear before I ever became an ambassador. So you cannot accuse me of that. I I, I will not blow, uh, uh, you know, I, I won't blow your skirt up with just bull crap. I will tell you how I feel because I want there to be a YouTube channel that there isn't some slick fella leaning into the camera doing dramatic things about why I'm quitting YouTube or all this other bull crap. Here's what I want you to know about why I personally chose to order two OM-1 Mark IIs. So I don't know if it's directly accredible to me, but I know that several years ago, I told OM Systems that I wanted to graduate a neutral density filter. And I, I said this in a meeting and I said, you know, someone much smarter than me has to figure it out. You know, I said basically what you need to do is take the dynamic range of the sensor you would do a calculation on any given scene for those pixels that exceed the sensor, right? One way or the other. And then you'd apply a mathematical formula to calculate an appropriate exposure for those pixels. Now, how it's gone, done uh, technologically wise, I haven't had a chance to visit with engineers. I'd love to, I'd love to learn exactly how it's working. But I know several years ago, I suggested this idea. Had they already been thinking about it? Don't know. Don't know if it was just me, but I know in a meeting, that I asked for that. I know I've put it on a sheet where they asked for ambassador's input on cameras, okay? So the live graduated neutral density filter is huge for me for my landscape photography. Clearly, wildlife, macro, if that's all you do, you probably don't need to order a Mark II, okay? For that reason, okay? For that reason. So for landscape photography, the graduated neutral density filter alone. So one of my new OM-1 Mark II bodies is going to be for landscape only. Okay. I do not like having one body that does everything. And please hear me out. I understand that finances are a limitation. You're looking at a guy that lost everything through a divorce. And I had one camera for a long time, many years ago, and had to do it all. Okay. Thank God now for custom modes where we can program different modes. So you might have C1 for wildlife, C2 landscape, C3 night sky, C4 macro. I have even more divisions than that. And that's why I like having multiple bodies. So the OM-1 Mark II will for sure be one of my predominant landscape bodies, and that will be ungripped. I do not want a grip on my landscape body. I don't really need the extra battery power. Shooting vertical, it's so these cameras are so light, it's not a problem, and I often put it on a tripod, and that makes putting it on my um, Photo Pro E6L tripod even better, okay? 
So yes, one of them will be dedicated specifically to landscape photography. Now, let's talk about the other reasons I ordered it. It's already, pro the OM-1 is probably the fastest camera on the market in terms of recording, uh, in terms of the buffer size for images, okay? Now it's most likely guaranteed to be the fastest. So that upgrade in the buffer means at SH2, drive mode SH2, which I use a lot at 50 frames per second, okay? If you've seen some of my wolf uh, hunting the bison images that I've been posting on my social media, you'll see some grimaces, you'll see some growls, you'll see teeth. You saw a yawn from a Pine Martin I just posted. At 50 frames per second, I captured that. I had many other photographers near me. None of them that I know of got the yawn on the Pine Martin. Don't know if A, they were ready, but also at 50 frames per second, I probably have 30 images to choose from of the yawn. So I could pick the best one, right? So for that, increasing this buffer. Now, I've never had a problem recording to my memory cards with the OM-1. Now I have even less of a problem recording more images. Okay, so for me, that alone, those two factors alone. Now we have enhanced autofocus performance, and that is going to be through uh, more computational power being directed to autofocus. Now, will there be a firmware upgrade to the OM-1 that improves autofocus? Don't know. This improvement may be attributable to hardware and not software. That's what you got to understand. You're dealing with a computer. Our cameras are a computer. So... Are these improvements in autofocus hardware focused? And if so, you're not going to get a firmware update that makes it better. The OM-1 is already phenomenal. And I assure you, if you have a problem with autofocus on the OM-1, it is you. I picked up a dipper at a good distance against dark water. Now, if you don't know what an American dipper is, pause it for a second, go do a Google search, and realize that that bird looks a lot like dark water. Okay. In fact, here, I'll show you a picture. It's not a great picture because it's not close, but it shows you how capable autofocus is. And it's because I know how to, how to tweak and set every single setting to maximize autofocus potential. So all the Facebook gurus, have you bothered looking at their images to know if they even really know how to set up autofocus? I suspect most people complaining probably couldn't even tell me in the menu where autofocus is, much less understand all the settings that affect it. Okay, so I'm very excited about the new uh, OM-1 Mark II body because I, I believe the, the autofocus performance is going to be significant when it comes to wildlife and bird photography and bird and flight photography. And, and that is where I love having great autofocus performance because I like photographing in challenging conditions and challenging subjects. So does that mean you should order? You know, if you're a wildlife photographer, bird photographer, any performance increase in autofocus simply makes it better. So depending on how serious you are about your photography, sure. Uh, but again, I understand that there are always financial implications. That's true for whether you're buying a lens, a memory card, a camera bag, whether you're going to go drive your car somewhere to go photograph, you got to consider the cost of gas and maintenance on your vehicle. I get those factors. But I think you should be very encouraged by the technological innovation you're seeing in this camera. Who cares. I know, oh my God, we need a bigger sensor. No, most of us don't. The ambassadors, I, I, I never hear ambassadors really talking about a bigger sensor because we know how to get great images out of this camera. Okay. So maybe the next time you're on social media and you're listening to some Joe Schmo giving you advice that says, oh, I can never get the autofocus to work. Crazy thought. In my life, the mentors in my life were people who had advanced beyond me. I didn't ask people who weren't as good at me in a specific area how to do things. I found people who were better than me. I've had some phenomenal photography and non-photography related mentors in my life. And, and I look for people that were further down the road than me. So who is it you're seeking advice from on your gear, on your settings? You know, I was just on a workshop, uh, not this one, but the previous one. A Nikon shooter showed up and she had hired someone to set up her menu and her settings so she'd be ready for Yellowstone. And I felt so bad for her. Guess who she hired? A street photographer. Now, mm, may I just suggest that street photography and photographing wildlife subjects at minus 37 in Yellowstone, those nothing at all related. And he screwed her up so bad on many of the settings. It made it really difficult on her. So if you're a wildlife or landscape photographer and you want to hire somebody to help you with your camera gear, just a thought. Don't, know, don't hire a portrait photographer. 
Don't get a wedding photographer. Don't hire a street photographer. That will help you so much, okay? So let's get back to the to am I buying this camera, you know, and, and why maybe you should. So for me, the, the faster buffer, so to record more images quickly, the better autofocus performance, the live graduated neutral density filter, and now I have another half stop of image stabilization. So those five factors alone make it worthwhile for me to buy two of them. Am I getting rid of my own ones? Absolutely not. I, I see having um, one OM-1 will probably be dedicated strictly to macro photography, okay? One OM-1 might get dedicated to night sky photography, and then I'll have a wildlife body, and I'll have a landscape body. I, I, I probably will tweak with that because I won't be able to travel with all four, although honestly for their size, I probably could. Um, I haven't, I haven't nailed down exactly which will be which. I may use one of my OM1s for video, okay? So I have some, some wiggle room in there, but the OM1 is phenomenal. Now, if you look at my wildlife OM1, I want you to look at how worn this is, right? L look at my grip. Can you see that? See how worn all this is? It's because I actually use my gear, okay? If you're talking to someone whose gear always looks perfect, maybe they're not really shooting it that much, right? So... Let's jump to the, uh, the the lens, the 150 to 600, okay? And I've heard all kinds of whining and belly aching about who made the lens and whatnot. It's an OM system lens, okay? It is going to be incredible in terms of the focal length, but I can already predict the nonsense on social media. You ready for this? Think about it. You'll be able to be at a 2400 millimeter effective focal length, right? Um, if you, if you, uh, you know, so we've got a 150, 600, so we're at 1200, right? Well, you can put a doubler on there. Okay. All right. And, and even if you don't, let's just say you're, you're sitting at 1200 millimeters. Oh, I can already see it. I can't get a sharp shot with this lens. Well, what's your shutter speed? 800, right? Uh, 640. Well, no crap, Sherlock, you think? So this is going to be a great lens for the birder, for the bird photographer who doesn't want to spend $7,500 on the 150 to 400. Will I buy the lens? I'll be honest, I've toyed with this one a lot more than the 100 to 400, okay? Um, if I order it, it'll be also to let clients use. I really don't see it replacing my 150 to 400. I mean, the 150 to 400 is my all-time favorite lens, and, and the quality is not going to be the same. I, I see people belly aching about the price of this 150 to 600. Do you understand how much money you'd have to spend in most other lenses to get the equivalent, right? So, you, great. Move to another system. If you're a whiner, just go buy that crap. Carry it around. Lug it around. I, I am out here working with every camera system. I have to go into the menus to find some of the craziest stuff. I had a Nikon user swearing they had live highlight alerts, you know, pre-capture. No, you do not. And it makes exposure so much easier, right? So, I, I see every system in the field. On this trip alone, I have Sony, I have a Canon, I have Fuji, and I have OM System. I deal with it all, all the time, okay? So despite some of you guys are going to leave your little comments down there, I guarantee most of you don't deal with all those camera systems as, all, as often as I do. Forget the stupid little review sites that take pictures of, of uh, focal charts on walls. I dare them, bring your big Canon, bring your big Sony lenses, stand next to me in the Pharaohs with the winds whipping, and let's see who gets the most sharp shots of puffins flying in 30 mile an hour winds, right? Let's just do it. I'd love to. I'd love to stand there with them. And and no, they can't crop. I won't crop. They can't crop. Let's see how it goes. You know what would happen, okay? So the 150 to 600, I think is going to be a great lens for bird photographers who will make sure they're using a fast enough shutter speed and or a monopod or a tripod for some support and follow all my principles about shooting at higher ISO and learn how to post-process. That's going to be a phenomenal lens for a lot of people. I gave, I, I did not buy the 100 to 400. I didn't really need it. Didn't see a, uh, a possible use for it. I may, I may get this 150 to 600 for a variety of reasons, but no, it, it's, it's not going to replace my Beauty and the Beast lens. I mean, this thing is my baby. It goes everywhere with me. I've been tearing it up here in Yellowstone with it. Should you get it, if you can't afford the 150 to 400, but you want a better lens than the 100 
I'm sorry. I, I, let me make sure I said that correctly. If you can't afford the 150 to 400, okay, which I understand, $7,500 is a lot of money. It's not compared to other equivalent lenses. And all you full framers that want to bitch and whine in the comments, oh, Leo, uh, I don't care. So I would much rather have the 150 to 600 over the 100 to 400. It's probably going to be bigger, right? It's obviously a little more expensive, but it's going to be better quality. So those are factors that you need to decide what is your priority. If it's focal length, okay, great. You're going to get a longer longer focal length, but you're going to have to make sure that you're not pushing this at 200th of a second and then whining about your images. And if you don't know what makes an image unsharp, hop over and look at the video I have that's called Assessing Image Sharpness. I'm surprised that image hasn't that video hasn't had more views because God knows I see so many unsharp images that that's probably the number one video people should be watching. Okay, so I think the 150 to 600 is a really good addition to the lens lineup, and I think the OM1 Mark II is going to be a phenomenal camera body. Uses the same grip, the same batteries as the OM1. I did buy a new grip. I plan to leave the grip on this OM1. I did buy a new grip because for my wildlife, I want two batteries. That's critical for me. And I shoot a lot of vertical images and the grip makes it so much easier. So that's what I've been looking forward to in this video. I hope you'll give some serious consideration to the benefit of the OM-1 Mark II. If you just bought or you have an OM-1 and you're happy, hey, awesome. I mean, I don't know any Canon shooters that probably buy every single body. I don't know any Nikon shooters or Sony shooters that buy every single body. Why would you need to buy every single body as an OM system shooter? I think it's a great upgrade. I'm excited about it. Um, I look forward to producing videos on it. I'll be adding it to my OM system mentorship program and I'll have it with me at OM system only workshops that I'm doing. I think it's a great addition to the camera lineup. I think the 150 to 600 fills a big gap in the lens lineup between the 150 uh, to 400. Uh, Pro and the 100 to 400. I think it's a perfect fit right in the middle for wildlife photographers. So hope that helps. Uh, today was a phenomenal day in Yellowstone. We had five wolves this morning. I'm sorry, five foxes. It was a personal record for me in terms of one day getting great close shots of foxes out hunting and running around and stuff. So I hope some of you will look forward to joining me in a workshop in the field. Um, I will be eventually researching how to do some Facebook lives. I'm sorry, some YouTube live videos where you guys can chime in and ask questions. I travel a lot. It's going to take me a little while to get there. I want to say thank you to all my supporters, those who are part of my online community. I reached a thousand subscribers like that. I'm at 1.5 a thousand subscribers after like nine videos. My channel's already been monetized. I cannot thank you em uh, enough for your positive comments, your encouragement. One guy asked about merch. I am going to be doing some t-shirts, mugs, and things with some of my favorite sayings. You know, just shoot, um, crop the crap. I'll be talking about take what nature gives you. I'll be doing some videos on these. So again, hey guys, I love you. I appreciate you being part of my community. Even you haters, you know, love you haters, man. Post your silly ass comments. I'll bust you in the chops a little bit verbally. But if we're ever out in the field and, I'm, and we meet, I'll be happy to buy you a beer and you can get me a bourbon or a scotch or something. Thanks guys. We'll talk to you later.